Hi, and welcome everyone to this uh, first session of the Energize Your Classroom series brought to you by our teacher training team here at Language Cert. Uh, I'm Silvia Garastati and I'm Head of Teacher Support for Language Cert, and we are indeed so very excited to be able to have you with us here today. Uh, we are waiting for our people to join and uh, we see the um, participants uh, starting joining. So please, uh, the chat is open and you can write to us a hello. Would love to hear uh, where you're joining from, the city that you're joining from. Um, oh, right. Uh... <laughs> hello. <laughs> And Joanna is here with us. I'm delighted to start our uh, Energize Your Classroom series with you, Joanna. Uh, Joanna Paulinelli, who is the Managing Director of the British School of Pisa and uh, uh, one of our sort of really, uh, she comes always with exciting topics. And today uh, she's gonna talk about using AI tools to prepare students for language cert exams in an inclusive environment. Joanna's interests uh, revolve around technology and creating an inclusive environment in the classroom. Uh, and we, therefore we are very, very excited to have her address uh, our community, our teaching community from uh, a number of cities I see here, uh, mm. Milan, Bergamo, Italy, Thessaloniki, uh, a lot of our Italian teachers joining. Uh, it's well, great you to have you back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Donna, welcome. Uh, the floor is yours. I know you have so many great things to share today. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. So it's lovely that you there's so many people joining us today from all over the world. Excellent. You must like the topic, right? Well, I hope you like the topic. Uh, I will be making this session very interactive so keep your fingers on your keyboards and um, because i will be asking you to interact i can't just talk for an hour all right so um before we start so i will be talking about artificial intelligence which is a which is a big hot potato topic and there are new technologies um, every day um, every day, you know, I find new things, I try new things out. So I'm not an expert um, because artificial intelligence has only been around for a short amount of time. But I have been trying all these different things out and I'm excited to share what I have learned with you today. So let's start the introduction to this webinar with my favorite avatars, Claire and Paul. Off we go. Welcome, everyone. Today, Joanna will be exploring the application of artificial intelligence in the context of nurturing an inclusive environment. As educators, keeping up with the latest technological advances is crucial for fostering more inclusive classrooms. Utilizing artificial intelligence holds the potential to unleash students' creativity, offer personalized feedback, and equip them with the skills necessary to use artificial intelligence tools in their future careers. Integrating artificial intelligence can also alleviate teachers' workloads. In this presentation, Joanna will illustrate how this innovative technology serves as an inclusive resource for students, while also providing educators with a valuable tool. Okay, now I have a question for you. Sorry, um, what what do you think about these avatars? Just just write in the chat box, what do you think about these avatars? Oh, any, any sensation? Did they look real to you? <laughs> the accents were very good. The first one had an Australian accent and the second one had an English accent. So how did you find them? Very unnatural, okay? Not real, all right, all right, yes, absolutely. They both looked very serious. Yes, they did. A bit over, over. The accent was good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, unnatural. Okay. Now, these avatars were done using text to speech. Okay. Now, I want you to think about what aspects of language do you think that your students practice whilst creating these videos? Now, these videos are, you can use this, this, um, the, this, this website for free. And your students can actually create these videos. So tell me, yes, Anna, listening, absolutely. Yes, okay, all right. Any other, yes, listening, absolutely. Anything else? Any other aspects of good for speaking practice? Yes, anything else? All right, oh, yes, dialogue, construction, absolutely. So I'll tell you how they work. Basically, you choose your avatar, all right? And then you paste, you, you, you write, 
um, you write the text, okay? And then when the text is complete, it creates the video. However, if what you've written is not correct, okay, you will be able to hear the mistakes. So the students can practice writing skills. Yes, Francesca, reading skills, listening skills. They can listen to the pronunciation. So, I mean, it's quite, uh, it's the task that I find interesting, doing the task rather than the end result, okay? So do you think your students might like to create such a video? Do you think, um, and at the same time practice some language skills? What do you think? Yes, Diana says yes, okay. Oh, well, that's good, of course. So although they're a bit unnatural, so it's not, I don't want you to think about the end result. I want you to think about more um, your students being motivated while they're using it. Yes, sure, okay. Thank you, Ness. If you said no, I would have been a bit of difficulty. Thank you, thank you. All right, now. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of these artificial intelligence tools and some of the benefits of using them. I also am going to talk about the inclusive AI tools for language learning, because if any of you have ever followed me before, you know that I, um, I talk a lot about dyslexia and inclusion, and that's what really started me in using artificial intelligence, because I wanted to see how it, this technology could help my students with dyslexia. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of um, ways that it can actually increase motivation in our classrooms. Because I've been trying out all these things over the last five or six months with my students. And it's really nice I have this opportunity to share what I've learned with you. All right. So let's start with artificial intelligence tools. Now, since um, the pandemic, you know, everything has changed so much. And, you know, we had to learn how to use technology. We had to learn how to use Google Classroom, Drive, shared files, Zoom, everything. Okay. So, um, and then we were probably thinking, okay, so we've done that. Things are going to go back to normal. Um, but actually, you know, along comes artificial intelligence. And although we may be quite tired because we have learned so much so quickly over the last three years, I think it's really important for us to learn about artificial intelligence because I think that the students of today that we are teaching are going to use um, artificial intelligence in their jobs. It's going to be a tool that they're going to have to learn. Okay, so this is why um, I think it's important. Now, the chat box, um, today I'm going to be talking about chat box, but all different, different technologies as well. But um, the chat boxes are probably what you're most familiar with. And I mean, the thing that we, the most, the, the most impressive thing about these chat boxes is the instant feedback that we get, okay? Obviously, you know, when we, we are teachers and it's lovely to be able to follow all our students, but very often we may have classes of 20, 30, and we can't always um, look at what students are doing, okay? And it's nice for them to be able to have this instant feedback and this personalized tutoring that helps them, where we can give them things to do, they can they can do them at home, they can use these technologies to improve their language, all right? And also, as I said, I have found that it is it can be an engaging in learning experience. And I hope that when I show you some of the things that I use, you will agree with me, even if you're against artificial intelligence, hopefully um, I will show you some things that you like. Now, um, ChatGPT is based on a language model and it was created by leading AI research organizations. And what's really different about ChatGPT to teachers is that um, this is me, this, is, this, this looks like me already at the beginning of the academic year. I am already tired. I don't know about you all. <laughs> Although here, today I have to energize you, but I'm already <laughs> starting to feel tired. Um, but, you know, chat, chat, GPT and artificial intelligence. Yes, so are, so are you, Maria. Oh, yeah, you know, we need our Christmas holidays already. But chat, GPT, you know, uh, artificial intelligence doesn't get tired. OK, and that is one of the benefits of this technology. All right. <laughs> so I have a point. When you see the slide, go like this. this is a question. All right. So have you ever tried um, chat GPT? Yes, that's all the dirty job for us. Yeah, my, my slides seem to be going. I think I might have an artificial intelligence in my slides moving forward without me touching the button. Yes. Oh, this is great. Lots of you. Yesterday, I was actually in Rome and I asked this question. There was like 100 
teachers and like only two had tried it so this is good yes all right well if you haven't tried it then you know yeah what you'll see today it will probably shock you <laughs> all right so let's move on yes quite it's about half and half half of you have tried it now chat gpt is it's not nothing that you have to download it's just a website right that you just put in chat gpt and you can start asking chat gpt um, for information all right so Basically, when I started uh, using it, this is my aim, you know, okay, so help me to learn. Give me a challenge to help me to learn. All right. So, yes. Okay. So a lot of you have tried it. All right. So basically, um, for, if, we, if we talk about um, our, ourselves as language teachers, all right, it can create any sort of exercise that we want about uh, on any topic, all right? Let's start there. So for example, if you in your course book are doing an active uh, a unit on food, all right? Then uh, and you can say to ChatGPT, okay, give me 10 advanced idioms because it also can go by level related to food. This is an example, okay? Or, you know, if you're working on tenses, put some sentences in from the past to the future, okay? These are just, I'm just gonna should give you some ideas, but, what is quite amazing about it, if you haven't used it before, is just how fast it does it, okay? So this, these are the same exercises. So I've given the prompt, okay? So give me 10 CFR level um, C2 idioms on food to practice, okay? And then I've just written it up and then I press return. And this is what happened, you see? So if you haven't seen ChatGPT, I mean, this is how quick it can do this, okay? And I'm doing this for the people that haven't used it before, okay? And then, for example, okay, sorry. Okay, let me just press this, okay. Right. And this is the gap fill one, you see? In three seconds, it has created gap fill exercises, okay? I mean, it is quite impressive, okay? Now, at the beginning, I, st I was using it to create activities because I I mean I do use the book in my classes but obviously I like to be able to create material I've always created material so with my classes what we just I thought was how can we how can I use this with my students okay this technology in this in this um to create activities so what we've been doing is that our class have my classes have actually been creating their own material using chat GPT along with the course book okay so for example if we are doing a a unit on food, maybe one group will, will create some um, gap fill active um, exercises, another group will create some grammar exercises, and they will, you know, they will choose the exercises that they want, they will discuss together which 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 exercises are more difficult, which ones to, to create, and then they swap them with the other groups, okay? Now, so the end result is that they've created these activities, okay, that, that we've actually been using as part of and uh, we uh, all these activities we've been adding to our chapters in the course book, but actually it's the activity itself that the students really uh, enjoy. So it's like finding the right prompts, creating the right exercises, deciding which ones to use, which ones not to use, and all the language that is involved in doing this task. Okay, and then they actually get excited about doing the other group's tasks, okay? So there's lots of things going on. It's not just the end result, but it's everything. It's all the effective learning along the way, all right? So this is what I wanted to share with you, the, the way I've been using it, okay? All right, so let's look at some types of AI tools for learning, okay? So we have speech recognition software. Now, can anyone remember years and years ago when we had this software that would take text and it would put it into speech. Do you remember those mechanical voices? Does anyone remember how mechanical they were? Has anyone used them before then with their students? Because you know, I work with a lot of dyslexic students and they used to hate using these text to speech uh, technologies because there was no, there was no, um, you know, the, the pronunciation was all the same. Yes, Maria. And there was no intonation. We used to hate it, absolutely hate it. So obviously artificial intelligence has helped with this area. And there's so, the, yeah, uh, good afternoon, Rosanna. I'm seeing yeah, people are popping in. And also all the language translation software, which I'll be, I'll be showing you some, some of these things later. And there are so many learning apps. Every day there are these new learning apps. So what I like to do is use a variety of these tools. But I don't say to, I don't wake up in the morning and say to myself, 
um, okay, so I want to use artificial intelligence today. No, what I say to myself is, I, you know, what do I want to do with my students? What do I want to achieve? And is there anything that where I, I can use artificial intelligence or where they can use it that can actually um, help, you know, to reach my objective? It's not the other way around. It's, it's never the other way around, all right? So let's look at some of the benefits of using artificial intelligence as an inclusive tool. Now, over to you, because I've been talking too much already. Now, how do you think that students with dyslexia could use oh, artificial intelligence tools, okay? Any ideas on how you think, any tools that may be good for students with dyslexia? I've already given one away earlier, okay? So any ideas? Just write on the chat box. Thank you, Dastan. Trados, I haven't, I haven't um, tried that one before. All right, any ideas? Are you still there? <laughs> yes, break the text into chunks, okay? No idea. Well, my buddy, yeah, you know, no idea is good, okay? And Vanessa, that's what I'm here for. Reading, absolutely, that no idea. Well, that's good. All right, super. Right, so I'm going to share Clueless. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. All right, I'm going to share my favorite tool with you. All right, do, 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 do. And it is called Algor. Now, Algor was actually created by Italians, all right? Now, um, as you probably know, I mean, I don't know, are, are any of you state school teachers? Do you work in the state schools or do you, most of you, private school teachers? You can write, so just so I know if there's any, you know, state school teachers that work. Yeah, state school, okay, excellent, both, all right. So in state schools in Italy, you um, we give um, the students actually have some um, tools that they can use, right? And one of the most important tools that students with dyslexia can use is to be able to use concept maps, right? So we teach them how to take a text, highlight the keywords, and then create a concept map, which helps them so they don't have to reread the text. And it also helps them with images and memory. Okay, there's lots of state schools. All right. Now, Obviously, this takes time. Now, it takes me at least um, six months to teach my students how to do a concept map, all right? And then when they have to do, when it comes to exam time, they have to do so many, they have to read so much. And it, it does take them a long time to do these concept maps. We don't realize how long it takes and how difficult it is to learn to do them. So this is Algor and this can help. Obviously, you have to do them the normal way, but this is a, a really fantastic tool. So basically, you take any text, right? You can actually scan the QR code. You can take a picture, all right? So this is it. And I'm gonna show you how it works, all right? So you paste your text, okay? So I pasted it into Algor. Now, Algor is now gonna take the text and it's gonna break it up into sections, right? Just like you would do in a concept map, okay? So it breaks it up into sections. And, and um, so this is what you would, you know, you, if you don't have this system, you would start with the keyword, you would split it up. But look how quickly, there we go. It split it up into the life of Monet, okay, military service, impressionism. It's starting to split it up. It's starting to split it up into sections. Later life, okay, all right. And this is the end result. I'm going to show you the end result, right? Oops. Okay, so here we have the end result. Right. It's quite impressive where it's got the early life, okay, and then it's got artistic development, impressionism, and that is what it's actually been able to do. The pictures the students can add, I mean, there's pictures in there, but it's actually broken up that text. I know I need a wow. <laughs> it is quite impressive. It's free up until a certain amount of uh, maps, and then it's not expensive, this algorithm. Um, I think it's quite impressive. And then if you click on, there's a little um, robot as well. If you click on it, it can actually create, it gives you even more information about Monet as well. It's quite impressive. All right. So yeah, this is done by Italians. I'm quite proud of this. So this is one way that it can be used as an inclusive tool. All right. Now I spoke about, I spoke about, not about um, text to voice. So I just wanted to show you, this is a, a tool called Natural Reader, where you can download your text, you can like, you can take a picture and listen to the nice voices we have now. I mean, completely different than in the past. The power of artificial intelligence data-driven investor. 
The okay. power of artificial I mean, it's intelligence much, much is nice, so incredible. You can see that you know it's got proper pronunciation and everything. Yeah. All right. Yes, it's an open source. Yeah, Manuela. All right. Now, um, there's something quite scary though. I mean, there's positive things, and obviously there are negative things. Okay. And one of the technologies that are actually that I've seen and they have created is the ability to clone your voice. I mean, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, you know, this this could be this could be terrible, you know, be able to clone my voice. I mean, it does imply a lot of ethical uh, considerations. However, I wanted to tell you that it's all is well because I did try to clone my voice and my accent, okay? And I want, this is what came out, okay? You ready? You can tell me if you think it's good or not. This is my cloned voice. Will AI ever be able to clone a Scottish accent? All right, so it's like, it's like Scottish. It's not, I mean, it's a bit of Scottish in it, but it's like a bit American, okay? So um, <laughs> not yet. However, when I did do the same thing in Italian, I did sound quite similar to my own voice, okay? But you can understand how maybe from with students with dyslexia that do use the technology, it could be interesting, but obviously there are a lot of ethical considerations to be able to clone a voice. All right, now, another inclusive um, technology that I find. Um, if any of you have been to my other webinars, I uh, always say how important it is as teachers and uh, because we teach our students to underline keywords, yeah, and um, encircle keywords to help their memory, I always say, please, teachers, don't, um, <laughs> so it's got Italian, it's got Scottish accent, yeah. don't underline mistakes or circle mistakes because you're only helping them to remember the mistakes. So, I mean, over the years, I've tried all different ways, you know, to correct my students' work without, without making them feel, you know, demotivated, you know. And then with a group, we started this correction code. Um, um, so what I did was, uh, with one of the first group, we decided on a correction code together. We created the correction code. We put it up on the classroom wall. And so, I mean, I did this with all my groups. So now when my students do a writing, I always get them to do a space between each line. Um, and we just use the correction code. So if there's a preposition missing, we'll have that symbol. Or if there's a verb, we'll have that symbol. And then they've got to think about, you know, what, what is a preposition. So they, it's more of a metacognitive way of, of giving feedback and for them to actually um, learn about their mistakes rather than underlining. Okay, so this is what I do normally. Obviously... Uh, with the arrival of artificial intelligence, um, with the arrival of artificial intelligence, we have the things like Instatext, which can actually correct instantly. Okay, so as you can see, it's got better ways to use English, and you can actually see the mistakes. However, I have been using um, Chat GPT. Okay, now not just to correct my mistakes but to ask it for tips on how to use my writing, okay? All right, so for example, I, I asked it to improve my English, but give me some tips on, you know, how I could actually make it better, but not just by correcting it, okay? And it gave me these tips for improvement, for example, um, use, I should use more engaging language or the, the tense consistency should be improved. And this is like a little template that, my, that your students can actually use to think about when they do their writing. So they're not just getting chat GPT to completely correct their language, but it can give you so it can give them some, some tips on how to improve their language. So it's very dependent on the type of um on the type of language and prompts that you give them. Yes, sorry, I said it was an open no, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. No, it's not. But I, I've been using it, I used it for free for like a, a, a for the first few months. And now I'm actually paying a subscription, but I can't remember how much it is. But at the beginning it was free. Okay. But anyway, sorry, yes. Anyway, let me move on from there. All right. Now, how can I increase motivation with this artificial intelligence? Because my big thing is um, you know, creating the atmosphere where students can learn, where students can be motivated, okay, which is not easy, and especially in big state schools with um, in state schools with many students and teenagers of today are not easy, you know, their concentration. Um, so I really, I mean, the whole idea of uh, increasing intrinsic motivation, you know, that desire for learning has always, you know, motivated me, motivated me in my teaching. And at the beginning, uh, those of you who have 
who have taught in uh, private schools, you know, they teach you to present and then you've got to pr practice and produce the language. But recently I have been actually following states, Italian state school teachers' ways, there you go, of um, doing more project-based learning, okay? Not just doing, you know, um, activities where we're just looking at specific grammar or vocabulary, but where we're actually um, working on projects. So I've been doing a lot of project-based learning and a lot of task-based learning. And uh, I find that these really motivates my students. So I've started to think about, you know, how can I use artificial intelligence to help me with the end results when I do these projects, okay? Which means that I have more time in the class, okay? And more time with my students to work on using the language, to work on emotions, to work on, um, you know, motivation. And uh, this is, I'm gonna show you what I've, what I've used so far, all right now. So project-based activities. Now, I also try to do projects which are topics that are um, also that come up in the exams, remember? Because a lot, you know, when you do project-based learning with your students and you do topics that actually uh, come up in the exams, they're already practicing all the language that they need. And one of my favorite ones is doing things on the environment, okay? So how can I, so first of all, as a teacher, when we see um, project-based learning, it means, oh no, I've got to prepare the material. And then before artificial intelligence came around, you would have to go on the internet and start to look for things, okay? Well, here we go. You can actually ask ChatGPT to create a lesson plan for you in the level that you want, on the topic that you want. All right, let's see what it comes up with, okay? Mm. Okay, so it's given us, it's given us objectives, materials to use, it's given up the warm up, all these things, okay, in the lesson plan, um, which actually can help us as teachers, we can take ideas from it, okay, or, or we can actually um, move on and we can actually say to it, okay, why don't you give me some more, like some more activities that I can do? What sort of activities can I do with my students? Okay. And here we've got some role play activities, group discussions. It gives you lots and lots of ideas. And you can actually ask it to give you some activities on some of the language that you want to use um, well, or, uh, on this topic. So it can give you all different uh, vocabulary matches and all these different things, gap fill, whatever type of exercise you want. ChatGPT will do it for you, okay? So as a teacher, this can help you with your planning of the projects for your students. Also, I mean, very often, you know, if students don't have a lot of time to practice the language, you know, because when we do these discussions in class, they've got to be able to talk about the language related to the topic, okay? So very often I say to them, okay, go home, practice some of the language on the topic. And um, this, is, this is called Talk Pal AI. I don't know if anyone's used it before, it's free. And here you've got people, they've got your little uh, avatar people um, that can just talk to you on different topics. So this was Emma and I asked her about carbon footprints. Okay, so here, she, here we are. Hi Emma, I'd like to talk about carbon footprints. Hello, that's a great topic to discuss. Carbon footprints are the amount of greenhouse gases emitted through human activities and products. It's important to reduce our carbon footprint to help combat climate change. What are some ways you think we can reduce our carbon footprints? I try not to use the car when I can, and I use my bicycle or I walk. Okay, so when you, you can actually write or you can actually speak, that's a fantastic initiative. Using alternative modes of transportation like cycling or walking is a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. Are there any other actions you take to minimize your impact on the environment? Okay, so you can go on, you can go on. But also it gives us um, feedback, okay? So if you write, it will give you feedback on your English, okay? And yes, this is a tool that can be used as a warm-up. Anything where your students begin to think about the topic and you know, think about the vocabulary. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of tools that, that you can use in, as a warm-up. Absolutely, yes. And of course, debating. I'm going to talk about that, Vanessa, because um, I want to move on because it's such an important um, um, methodology to use um, because obviously, I mean, 
if you, you know, things have started to change, you know, I mean, you can't just say to your students, you know, go home and do a presentation or go home and write an essay on, okay? Because, you know, they will use these tools, okay? They will, absolutely. I mean, all my students knew about this tool before myself. <laughs> but if at home they can, they can use these tools to help them research the topic, get the information, even do a presentation, and um, then when they come to class, you can get them to share what they've what they what they've done. They can debate the topic, and all this means that in class you have more time to work on this effective learning on on and at home. And um, they've got time to like you know uh, prepare themselves. Okay, so yes, thank you for that. I've gone a bit off topic, but yes, thank you. Which is which is all which is normal for me. Anyway, then we have so. Now, we've also got the artificial intelligence um, tools that allow you to create images from text, okay, which I find quite fascinating. So I asked it to do a picture of a teacher who's just finished a webinar, which will be me at five o'clock, okay? And it can create um, images from text. Now, again, it's the actual activity, not the result that's important, because when a student has to write down the text, if their English is not correct, the image won't be correct. Okay, so this is what I, I would like you to think about uh, when you think about artificial intelligence. Now, I talked about presentations because we're talking about project work. And you know that, you know, part of project work is, um, you know, uh, creating a presentation. But the reason why I said that we can't just say to our students, do a presentation for homework and then mark the presentation when in school because they, they could use these tools. Now, this is an example. This is called Tom, okay? So I've asked it to do me a presentation on reducing carbon footprint. Okay? And you see in, in, in microseconds, it starts to like give you all the, it, 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 this is called Tom, T-O-M-E. Um, but I actually do have a list of all these these um, apps that you know maybe after maybe the the language help team can send. This is <laughs> but okay now so in like seconds it's created the presentation. Okay now obviously your students don't you know this could be a way for them to generate ideas on the topic they're going to be talking about. They can take some of these ideas and then develop them. But that's you know this is how quick AI, uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence can do presentations. But there's another one that I think is even more amazing, and it's called Gamma. Okay, yes, it's Xgiri. Now, Gamma can create presentations. It can create a website. Okay, so so you ask it to do a presentation on carbon footprint, and it says, okay, here's an outline. And then you can say, if you don't like it, you can say, try again, try again, until you've decided what you would like the presentation to be. You click on the button. Okay, this is me, because I've done these in live. And uh, that's it. In three seconds, it's created this, presentation on carbon footprint, okay? Which is, it's just the same for anything that you ask students to do at home. Um, but, you know, for us as teachers, this could be quite handy, you know, if we have to present something or, or you know. Uh, but for our students, I mean, it can help them to organize their ideas, think about what they want to do. But then in class, when they're there, you have to give them an, an, an activity where they've taken what they've done, they have to decide in groups, which parts they're going to they're going to they're going to do? Maybe that one uh, one group can do one part, another group can do another. They can just they can do, they can negotiate. You know what what they want to do in the presentation, and all that part is the important part. Okay, but yes, it's scary, but it's here, <laughs> and it's here. It's going to get it's going to get even. Uh, I think you know as we move on, we're going to get more and more um, technologies. So yes, it can actually you can create a website as well. Okay. Now, before on those videos that you found scary, um, I just wanted to show you the program. It's called Synthesia, and you can actually import your PowerPoint into it and choose your avatars. Okay, so if you want to use it with your students, um, but I think you can do up to four or five for free. I mean, like any of these, you can do them for free, and there's a there's a little thing to pay. But I think I've done about four or five uh, videos um, on this, and then I just delete them. All right, but I mean, obviously, I mean these are activities that you do with your students maybe a few times. And um, just to get them to do some an activity, you know, and then you, um, you know, obviously students have to do this all the time. They wouldn't be motivated, but it's just something nice to do maybe a couple of times with them. Now this is scary. So who said scary? That this is even scarier. <laughs> now this isn't actually out yet, but I was looking at all different things that were coming out, and basically now I am 
looking at you all, okay? I'm not, I haven't been reading anything. I've just been talking to you. And you know that because my eyes are on the screen. They're, they're here, I'm looking at you, okay? But very often, you know, if I'm not as prepared, you know, maybe I will have things that I'm reading. But if, but if I do read, my eyes will go down like this, won't they? Yeah? And so, you know, you won't be, you can't see me and you can see that I'm reading. So there's like technologies that, um, that are coming out called Maxine, where they actually lift your eyes. So you're looking down and you lift and actually your eyes are, um, are lifted by program. <laughs> so, you know, so this is just some technologies that are coming out that I wanted to share with you. Okay. All right. Now, um, I've chosen the things that I use. Now, this is something that is, um, it is I think it's nine euros a month. Okay. Yes, you're right. Cheating. Yes, yes, yes. Cheating. Absolutely. Not in, you know, not if you, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're doing like a proctored exam, you can use these programs. But yes, yes, obviously, this, pro if you did, we're using this in a normal type exam, you could absolutely cheat with, yeah. Anyway, so this program costs, that's nine euros a month, okay? But I have been using it um, and I find it just fantastic, even for you and your jobs as teachers, okay? So very often my students, they do a lot of meetings, um, you know, on on Zoom at home and they have to organize these projects, okay? And I obviously have a lot of meetings with my staff. And Assembly is, um, is, is a system where you do your meeting, okay? And it records it. And then it creates all the meeting minutes and all the notes and breaks down the meeting, okay? And then you can just download the PDF and send it off. Obviously, you can like tweak things and maybe, you know, sometimes with my accent and get things wrong, but it is extremely, extremely interesting. Yes, Francesca. No, it's not. Now, it doesn't make sense to have a, a ready-made. So I am reading a uh, made presentation. Okay, no. But, okay, if they can use that presentation, okay, to help them to generate more ideas, work on topics, talk about it in class, talk about what, what parts of the presentation they want to develop, okay? That's that's the point, okay? So, I mean, it, it, um, that's the point. And then when, when they've decided the parts that they can use, but these technologies can sometimes make it faster, the end result, the, the, the effective part, but they're still working on all the effective part of doing the presentation together. And it's just a tool that I think, you know, I mean, we have to realize that these tools are out there, okay? So it's good for us to know that they are out there as teachers. All right, so anyway, assembly I am, is my favorite tool. I use it nearly all the time. And uh, when I have a meeting, I just send the meeting notes because usually, you know, I'm always the one that has to take the, the notes. And when I do take the notes, I, I'm not so involved in the meeting, you know? And this way it does it for you. And my students use it as well. All right, so some task-based activities. Now I'm gonna ask you, I've been talking a lot now. Task-based activities. So my question for you is, in your opinion, what is my, what, sorry, what's going on? It's going, it's I've just given it, I've just given it to you. <laughs> so what is my greatest passion? Now, there must be some little avatar in my computer today that's moving my slides. So what is my greatest passion that I use to motivate my students? Okay, music for me, cinema for you, Katia, music. Yeah, Mariana, yes. <laughs> visual art, visual art for you, Manuela. Cinema, okay. For me, it's music. What about you? What about science, okay? Now, uh, do you like literature, food? Yes, TED Talks, music, a lot of music, okay. Do you like sharing your passions with your students? Very often, some of my students actually get passionate about my of my, my passions, you know, and students love sharing their passions. I mean, that's when I have my first lesson. That's a, that's always the first question I ask them because they love to talk about their passions. Yes, traveling, excellent, wonderful. All right, now, so my passion is music. It is, and I will be doing a session on music for Energize Your Classroom. So I am. Um, I love asking them to write song lyrics love love it okay and um, so what I usually do is I take uh, a song an Italian song and I ask them to write the lyrics in English okay but not not just to translate the lyrics but you know to maybe take the the feeling of the song and create the lyrics in English okay so and I will teach them how important it is to find the right words that rhyme with the words and we will look at all these things okay 
And so um, I was just thinking to myself, I've been using this for, I've been doing this for a long time. I was thinking, I wonder if I can use any e chat GPT to help with this, all right? Very simple, okay? So for example, where we, we, we were doing the song Volare, which is an Italian song, but I think everybody knows it, Volare. And they called it um, Blue, okay? So yes, so so what they did, so chat GPT, you know, um, give me 50 words that rhyme with blue, on a key and it comes up very quickly. And then you, then the students can decide which ones they want to use, okay? All right. And this is, I just want to show you um, the activity, okay? Right, because I'm going to show you uh, the end result. If you want to have a little sing along with me, I know it's difficult when we're not all, we're not in the same room, but yeah, I thought I would I would show you this because this is one of my favorite activities ever to do with my students. <laughs> I could go on there, I could go on there. But yes, yeah, I just love singing in the classroom. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? <laughs> but it's a very simple activity to do this, okay? Yes, thank you, thank you. Loved it, good, good. So I was looking into, um, I thought to myself, I wonder what artificial intelligence will create with music. So what they are actually creating is we've seen text to audio, okay? Right? Now... They're doing, well, it's not, when something's your passion, sometimes Marilla, it's easier, you know, to do in class. Anyway, so now they're finding ways to do text to music, okay, or images to music, which is very interesting. And I mean, all these things are, are they're not out yet, okay, but they're coming, right? So um, I'm just going to, this is Music LM, okay, so I'm just going to just show you a video where I've just, um, and it shows you what what is okay? Basically, you can write the type of music that you want, like reggaeton, and it does it for you. Okay? Or a small tempo, tempo song. Okay? It creates it for you. All right? And then look at this, okay? So this is, you know, an image, text, and a text, music. Okay? It's quite amazing. You probably think I'm poor musicians, but anyway, I'm just I have to show you this, just to show you, you know, the advancements of this technology. And this is not out yet, but it does is interesting to me. All right, so the final part um, is going to be talking a little talking a little bit about um exams because you're probably thinking, oh Joanna, all oh, this is great, you know, projects and everything, but how what can I actually use to help my students with uh, to, to you know to get them to certification? And is there any tools I can use? Well, again, I start first of all with the activity and then I think about what, what we can do. Okay, so this is one of my favorite activities for the speaking uh, where I show them video. This is like the language shared video, okay? Then um, they're all on YouTube. And then I would split my students into groups, okay? And I would show them the criteria of a exam, what the examiners are marking them on. It's so important for students to understand what they're being marked on. And it's so important for them to understand exactly what they have to do in the exam. Okay? Because, you know, the more that they know what they've got to do, the more prepared they are. So one group watches the video and marks the grammar, writes down the mistakes, writes down the positive things and the nice expressions. The other group uh, looks at the pronunciation. OK, and then we have feedback. And this is a good activity. And then when the, uh, my students get confident, you might have the odd volunteer that says, oh, Prof, can I can I try and do the exam? So the, the student will do the exam with me and then the other students will mark them, okay? So lovely activity to do to prepare for the, for the speaking exam. Uh, so I was looking around, okay? And uh, this is something that I found because sometimes people say that I talk too quickly. I know, I mean, I don't know why people say that, but sometimes they say I speak too quickly, okay? 
So um, I was looking at some some uh, some sites, some tools that would give me some feedback for when I'm speaking. Okay. And um, so I found this tool called Poise, and this is also it's not free. And um, this is an old, I think this is around ten euros a month. Um, but the two the two sites I've invested in are Assembly and this one, because this one actually, uh, when I do um, a meeting or um, even today I could have used it, but I didn't use it. Okay, it actually records records you, and it gives you feedback while you are talking. For example, slow down, and uh, or, or it says you know clarity, Joanna, clarity, and then you're using too many filler words like mm. So I mean. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing, this, okay? Uh, and I actually, I, I'm improving. I am improving. And it'll take the text, it'll show you, it'll show you what, you know, the way you could have improved. And then you can actually, you know, it takes what you've said and you can press on regenerate suggestion and it can redo your English. It can give you another version of English, okay? Which is quite fascinating. So your students, you know, they could like, you know, record themselves doing the speaking and they can have all this feedback. So, I mean, hopefully some of these things will eventually become free, but this is the, the newest thing that I have found for feedback and, I, and it's monitoring my progress and I, I am getting better because I did a meeting a few days ago and it said it was the best meeting I'd ever done. So obviously I am improving and it gives you activities to practice areas that you can practice like energy. My energy is always high, but you can, you can practice clarity, okay? so. I wanted to share this with you, all right, just to show you um, these things. And another thing, um, and one of my favorite things about the language set exam is the speaking part, okay? And I love the role play part of the speaking because it's I find it very creative, okay? I don't know if any of you have seen it before, but basically, um, basically you 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 start, you have us like a, a card, role play card, and you've just got to start off a role play. You, you can become a character. So I always get my students to 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 become little actors, okay? And um, so this is this activity. Now using AI, the the the, the site that I talked to you before called Talk About Pal AI, you can actually use that, you know, just to do your chatting, to start to practice. And also um yeah, I mean, um, sorry, sorry, let me just move ahead here. And also there's a site called Resemble AI where you can actually you can actually create your role play. You can write the role play out and you can choose the accents. Okay, so this is a this is a role play activity, which is now a reading, writing, and listening task. Because I love to mix tasks, any exam tasks, I will mix. That is my thing. Okay. For it, so for example, a listening task, right? This is a normal listening task where you maybe have a broadcast and you have to, or a narrative, you have to listen and you have to write down the answers. Well, I like to flip it and I'll say, okay, well, let's, let's, let's do our own po podcast. Okay. Let's record our own po podcast. Or I might use a, a reading text and I'll say, okay, let's make this into a list. Let's do a podcast from that. You know, I like to mix these tasks, but I always found it difficult to at uh, the logistics for doing a podcast and, and listening task. And add a podcast. Now you can actually um, drop in audio. It makes it much clearer and it makes the speech clearer. Okay. Or there are things like Descript where you can actually make it and you can actually write the the, the dialogue. I'm sorry, the, the listening. You can write it all out. Okay. And then you can play it. And if there's any mistakes, instead of, you know, instead of having to like re-record it or rewrite the whole thing, you can actually just go into the part of the audio and change and change the word. Okay. So, I mean, uh, these are all ideas that we can, that we can use for, um, to practice and, you know, the, the language, so any, any certification, any exams, but it's always nice to flip tasks. That's my advice to you. Okay. All right. So this is me at the end of the webinar. So just a few things I want to stay with you, Nana. Obviously, artificial intelligence will never, ever replace the teacher. And this, you know, oh, <laughs> absolutely. You know, although, you know, the, the whole affective side, the whole emotional side, um, I think, you know, I mean, it's always going to be there. And it just helps, for me, it helps just have more time to focus on that in the classroom. So to focus more on the affective side of, of learning and less on the effective side of learning. That's that's my um, takeaway. 
and um, and to concentrate more on the learning rather than the end result. Okay, so all these tasks that you do in class, you know, it's all the language that they learn where they're actually doing the task. I think is important. Okay. And, you know, because they work on collaboration, presenting, discussion, all metacognitive skills. And yes, you know, we have to privatize security. We have to privatize privacy. Yes, somebody wrote about that. But this is just a new technology. It's just come out and uh, we just have to go with the flow with it. You know, we have to look at different things. We have to try them out and we have to learn because, as I say, our students from today will use this in the future. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think we actually have time for some questions, Sylvia, which is quite amazing because usually there is no time for any questions. And I'm very happy about this. I know you have been amazing. We have a lot of, uh, you know, many people thanking you. And we do have a couple of questions that uh, uh, I might we have to the answer time. them all, but I'll try. <laughs> I'll so, try. yeah, you talked about. Um, uh, the privacy issue and uh, that th we're concerned with that, but I think you've uh, you've yeah, raised that. Uh, yeah, I'll, a... I'll, I'll give you a lot. I remember the last webinar I did for language. It was going to be. I was on that chat GP, and they actually banned it in Italy, and they just put it back on the day before my webinar. But yes, you know, chat GPT did get. They have changed some of the privacy, but you know. There are issues. I mean, obviously, if I had to do a webinar with the negative things about AI, I would be here another, you know, longer. But I just thought because I had to energize you, I thought it'd be better to give you some positive things rather than start the year with some negative things. Yes. <laughs> so this is all very new. And then some people are wondering, where do you see this uh, kind of going? How do you see maybe classrooms in the next years changing uh, because there is AI integration? If you can, you know, somehow maybe speculate about, you know, two years down the line. Well, as I say, I don't think we're going to be doing all this, you know, homework you know, doing the same things for homework where we have to actually give them a, a grade, all that's going to change. You know, I think they're going to have to be doing more things in the class. OK, so at home, they're going to be doing all their, you know, all the work they've got to do using all their uh, little tools. And in the class, that is where they have to bring what they've learned. They've got to be able to discuss, they've got to be able to debate, they've got to be able to um, use all these, especially with English, which in the end of the day are important skills, you know, and obviously, they're going to have to write essays in class. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think so that that whole the whole idea about doing things for homework, which is in Italy, we're quite lucky though because in Italy this is already the case. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in Italy, you know, we do all these tests in the class where they've got to actually or orally, you know, do these tests, and it's a uh, which I think is different in the UK, but in Italy it's very much like that. I don't know what it's like in Greece. So, well, thank you for all your lovely comments. comments. Yeah, there's great comments coming in from the chat. And do you, um, have you, which tools are your students, uh, as you uh, experiment with them, which are they most excited about when they see them? No, I think, I think, I think the first time anyone tries chat GPT, you just get this sensation. I just, anyone who hadn't seen it before can, can just see, they can, you know, they have that sensation like, wow. So they 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 like they like that, but they also they like them. Anything new, whenever you give them something new, I mean, I worked with virtual reality for a long time, and now they just seem to uh, they just seem to like artificial intelligence more, and they're mm. learning so many things. You know, I always get them to research. If I see something that I like, I ask my students to look into it and try it and 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 do something with it. You know, because if not, if not, I'll be staying for like days and days on this so my students help me <laughs> so you have to I have to say thank you to them as well <laughs> the, right. uh, I think um, our teachers here were quite captivated a lot of them we have requests about uh, sort of just a list of these tools and a short description of what they can do yes I've got, uh, it. I've got that I can say that yeah I can say that yeah absolutely yeah and uh, just in terms of uh, housekeeping uh, th this uh, webinar will be um, it has been recorded and in at a later date it will be uploaded on our uh, YouTube uh, channel so oh. for those of you who want to uh, revisit some of these it will be um, uploaded there and um I think uh, we are um, very much looking forward, Donna, to your uh, next uh, yeah. webinar in yeah, December. Got, I'm going to get you all singing. It's just a shame I can't hear you. <laughs> Where we will yeah. be using, talking about using music, which is one of your passion, yeah, and yeah. Um, 
it's a, uh, you will be receiving a certificate of uh, participation. Those of you uh, who joined us today and uh, were able to uh, be here with us, with Joanna. And I want to thank you, Joanna, for uh, um, so being part of, uh, being with us in this first Energize Your Classroom, talking thank about you. this uh, uh, important topic. We look forward to seeing, um, the, to seeing you in our next webinars. We do host um, webinars for teachers um, uh, you will see them on our website. Once a month, we have the Energize Your Classroom, and we hope to be bringing more interesting topics uh, for you. So I think this is it for today. Uh, thank, thank you, you everyone. everyone. And thank you for people that I, I recognize a lot of you. So thank you for coming back to see me. You know, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you.